Now, when it comes to endangered species from Africa, we often refer to elephants and rhinos. However, the WWF has officially classified the most magnificent symbol of Africa, the lion, as vulnerable. In the last three generations, numbers have dropped by a staggering 40%. Despite having no natural predators, there are only around 23,000 African lions left in the wild. So what's killing them off? Well, it's us. Climate change, poaching and habitat loss. There are two African conservationists who have been recognised by the prestigious Whitley Fund for their work in preserving uh, lions. Dr. Bala runs a foundation and it's called uh, Iwaso Lions in northern Kenya. She's helped to increase the population from 11 in 2008 to 50 last year. And also we have Dr. Serge Alexis who works in the Cameroon, which is one of the three remaining hotspots for lions in West and Central Africa. I sat down with them for a chat. Well, with this award from Wild Fund for Nature, we will be able to call our lion because actually we didn't master very well their movement pattern mm -hmm. and their interface with local community. But we need that type of data set to be able to inform conservation strategy for those lions in the Benue ecosystem of northern Cameroon. So we call a lions to see exactly where they move. Mm -hmm. And if we know where lions are and we know they're approaching villages, we can alert livestock owners to the presence of lions mm -hmm. and we can say, Lions are on their way, keep your livestock well protected so they don't get killed by lions. So having tracking collars is so useful in our work. How do you win over a local community that is trying to have as much good land to raise livestock, support their families, with also supporting a predator. The communities I work with in northern Kenya are the Samburu and they've coexisted with wildlife for generations. It's not new for them. But it, of course, with all the new threats and challenges, it is getting harder. Samburu warriors are the best trackers you can have in this landscape. They're out there every day keeping an eye on their livestock. About 13 years ago, a young warrior came up to me. His name is Jenneria. And he said, Shivani, if we want to stop the killing of lions, mm. we've got to engage my demographic. We've got to bring on board the warriors. And that's how the warrior program started, was by a warrior himself. He engaged the warriors, he brought them on board, and through his mentorship and training, our network of warriors grew, and they track lions every day, they keep them safe, they keep livestock safe, and because the idea came from himself, that is what has made a big difference in the rise in lion numbers in our area. We have discovered that top-down approach for conservation have a weaknesses. Are we also discover that community have that traditional way to conserve biodiversity. So we are using local ecological knowledge techniques to integrate the community on what we are doing. There are people coming in that area, so the land actually is small for that number of people. To help them, we are actually trying to promote like nature-based solution, help community grow like agroforestry in a small space in their farm, where they can grow pasture, they can grow their crop using the sustainable techniques and then it can reduce the pressure on the national park where lions are found. The UNCCD are looking at the role of women, particularly in Africa, um, and land mm. and land management. You work with women. Why? Why are they important? The Samburu women that we work with have cultural beliefs about wildlife. They believe that historically wildlife belonged to them, but it was taken away from them. Mm -hmm. So through one of our Iwasa Lions programs, it's called Mama Simba, Mother of Lions. The women are out there restoring and recovering lion habitat. They're clearing out invasive species, they're planting grass, they're digging water holes for wildlife in the drought. They're doing so much to bring wildlife back to this region. They have huge ownership over it. And that's what makes this program so successful. Mm -hmm. And for me, the solutions that we need to all these challenges, climate, droughts, diseases, it's all about ensuring it's the communities leading their, d the decision-making in their areas. Basically, what you're both telling me is that you're at the forefront of mitigating climate change. Yes, the impact of climate in my environment is visible. So actually, temperature has changed, the rainy season has shifted a little bit, and actually you can see much drought than 
last decade, last, the last decade. So that climate change as well is also facing by local community mm -hmm. because their yield and their crop are not producing very well because this is a lack of water. These droughts are so prolonged and so severe, it's become part of our day to day. So we've had to incorporate it in our EWAS Alliance programs, make it part of our day to day management in all our programs. We see our river dry up every single year now. This river is the lifeline for our communities and this causes so much more conflict because people are coming looking for a little bit of water with their livestock, wildlife are searching for water and it just really exacerbates that human wildlife conflict. Droughts are severe. Climate change really is in our face every single day. This is a very challenging landscape for lions. Living in a pride is very hard. So they've just adapted and now they live alone. They teach their cubs how to hunt at much younger ages than lions in other areas. And our males are so active. They're not lazy and sleeping all the time. They're mostly maneless and they're actively moving and hunting every single day. That's fascinating. Maneless. Yes. <laughs> is that another adaptation or? It what? is an adaptation yeah. to the hot climate. I mean, our wow. temperatures up there are almost 40 degrees. In Africa, we've only got about 20,000 lions left. Their numbers have halved in the last 25 years. And in Kenya, my country, there's only about 2,000, 2,500 lions left. This is such a big concern for us as Kenyans. Lions are a symbol of our country. They are on our coat of arms. And it's so important for us as Kenyans to really protect what is ours and what is so important to our country. And there's more of that interview online. Time for the sport, Mimi. Thank you very much, Loquest.